Hi, in today's video we're going to do a brief comparison. What you're looking at here are two boards out of Newtone LB55 door chimes. This one on the right is from about the early part of 1980 and this one is from the, wait, I've got to look underneath. This is from the early part of 1992. So there's 12 years difference in production here. But what I was surprised to see, this, this board came out of a chime that a customer sent to me just recently, along with his Newtone IM5006 Master Station. Both units need to be rebuilt. And I was a little surprised when I talked to him on the phone initially that he had an IM5006 with an LB55 connected to it instead of a chime module, which would have sort of been the default standard in 1992. So I thought it was kind of unusual, but I figured, well, maybe the original homeowner that had the house built chose it for a reason, or maybe he had an old school installer who preferred to use a remotely mounted separate door chime instead of a chime module. I was surprised when I just opened it up on the workbench and disassembled it to get started on the repair to find this is a completely different animal than what we have over here. So this board is a board board out of my stock and this has this board has become a parts board it's been scavengered off of a whole lot over the last year or so and so there's a lot of components that are missing and I'll point out the ones that might matter but uh, very different so if we start with what we see right off the bat First, we can look at the, at, the, at the keypad assembly. So on the 1980 keypad, this is uh, what was, these are what are, were referred to as bubble keypads. And if you remember in the late 70s and early 80s, a lot of calculators that you would buy had membrane bubble keypads on them to operate the calculator. And that's pretty much what this is. This assembly here, this piece right here, this is actually made by Texas Instruments and this was a, a uh, membrane bubble pad assembly that would have been used on calculators and things. And all Newtone did was they put an overlay over the top of it, which you can see peels off, uh, to indicate which buttons are active to do which features to program the chime. What we have over here 12 years later in 1992 is a completely different sort of keypad assembly. What we have here is it's sort of a two board assembly. There's a circuit board on the bottom and you can see all of the solder points and if you it's kind of hard to show but down inside there are little tactile switches like the ones built into the control panel of an IM5006. So this is a much more modern design than what the early models had. And it's probably a lot more reliable because one of the problems with the membrane bubble keypads is the bubbles lose their seals and they go flat. And then when enough of them go flat, it's like you're pushing all the buttons at one time and that usually makes the device inoperative. So if we go ahead and lift these up to look underneath, we see a much simplified board layout here than what we had in 1980. Some of the things just to point out that are missing here are a lot of the electrolytic capacitors have been removed. The LM380N, which is the amplifier IC, would be here. That's gone. The little preamp I see here is missing. And the really important bit about this one is in this empty socket here is where the main micro microprocessor would go. These early Newtone chimes used either an Intel 8021 or 8022, which is the precursor to an 8080, which is what you would have had in your first home computer. And these are actually considered to be a self-contained miniature computer. By the time this chime was made, it was a pretty standard piece of equipment for these types of devices. But 12 years later, they were so obsolete that everyone had stopped using them. So what we have here in the 1992 version is this is a Holtec HT48, which is an 8-bit microcontroller. It's a modern device. You still have the same LM380N amplifier IC here, a couple voltage regulators, but you can see 
it's just a much simplified design compared to what it was in 1980. Uh, I assume Newtone thought it was time to update the board um, when board designs get to be too old and, and they have a legacy. That means that they're really expensive to keep manufacturing. There are always less expensive solutions, which is what this became. I just thought it was really interesting because I was really surprised. I don't think I've ever seen an LB55 with a board like this. I know this is near the end of the production of the LB55. I'm not sure how long the boards were made like this. I just thought it was kind of interesting. So why is this one here in the shop? Well, it has the same problem that these usually have, which is it has a really bad hum on it all the time. And one of the things that you can see, which is a potential problem, is this capacitor right here. Here are, these are all capacitors. There's a variety of them, big one here. All of these you can see have some sort of colorful plastic sleeve over the outside of them. Here they're blue, these are black, this one's black also. And if you look carefully, let me go ahead and zoom in. You can see on this main, this is the main power supply filter capacitor. You can see it has the black plastic sleeve on the outside with writing on it. And here you can see how it folds over the top and you have a nice overlap and a nice margin that makes a circle around the top of the capacitor. This is the way it's supposed to be. But let me show you what's wrong with the other one, what gives you a clue as to where some of the problems lie. So if we look at this one here, it has the same black plastic sleeve on the outside, but you can see how it's not folded over the top. It's actually pretty much even with the, with the rim of the capacitor. So why is this important? Well, the black plastic sleeve or covering is a heat shrunk material. It's sensitive to heat. And what this tells us here is that this component has been running hot and over the last number of years, since it's exposed the plastic covering to the heat, the plastic covering has continued to shrink and shrink and shrink and pull itself back off the top of the capacitor. So now it's even with the rim. If you look carefully at some of the other ones, like here, it's easier to see in real life than on the camera. And this one a little bit, these have sort of the same problem. You can see how the plastic covering is shrinking back over time. And that indicates a failure in those components. And when you have enough of them fail, then circuits go out of alignment and things don't work right. So it's just sort of a telltale sign. It's something you notice right off the bat when you work on electronic equipment. Uh, you have to use all of your senses to look for problems. And in this case, this, is, this just jumped out at me right away. Anyway, just a quick video, uh, a little bit of a surprise. I didn't expect to see a board that looked like this one today. I hope you found this video to be interesting and possibly helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Thumbs up. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's all for today. See you on the next video.